This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Lord's house on this beautiful day because we're, again, as I'm, I'm a former Midwesterner, at least we're not shoveling it. See, I'd be thankful for, thankful for small favors, uh, although can't race in this, unfortunately. So anyway, welcome to the house of the Lord as we gather this day, uh, the season, a new season, the season of Lent that we began this past uh, Wednesday. And uh, during the Lenten season, as I introduced last Sunday, we'll be taking a journey through the book of Exodus. <laughs> And uh, under the uh, overall theme of, of, of the Lord's words, let my people go, today will be in Exodus chapter 3, today's Old Testament reading, and the sermon theme uh, is centered around the, the title, How God Changes Us. Uh, in addition to your white uh, worship folder, you uh, hopefully received the prayer booklet that contains all the prayer requests that we received up until uh, the end of the day on Thursday. Uh, we did forget to change the date on it, uh, and we've had we've left that out for the that last couple of weeks. So I believe that this is uh, what you have there. It is the current list, even though the date doesn't reflect that. And I encourage you to use that in your prayer life, your, your household's prayer life uh, throughout the week. Also, you receive Coastlines, which uh, outlines the uh, 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 services and upcoming events in the life of our congregation. Uh, midweek services con uh, continue uh, this Wednesday, uh, that, uh, a series that we uh, introduced on Ash Wednesday entitled Guided to the Cross, and uh, please note that our midweek services uh, service will only be at no 12 o'clock noon, so uh, the rest of our Wednesdays uh, during Lent, uh, just the 12 o'clock noon uh, service. Uh, later this week, I will, uh, Sue and I will be out of town attending the Best Practices Conference in Phoenix, Arizona of many people, many leaders in our synod. And so uh, my Lutheranism 101 class will not meet uh, this coming Thursday. Uh, but uh, if anyone is still interested in that study that's described for you in Coastlines, uh, or know of someone that might be interested in that, uh, please let me know. And uh, that class will then resume uh, one week from this coming Thursday. Uh, everything else you'll find in Coastlines, and uh, so we come together this day in the name of the Lord. We welcome any guests with us, and we're happy that you have joined us. And let us, uh, join in, let us stand as you're able, and let us join in singing our first hymn, Hark the Voice of Jesus Calling. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, right where we are, you love us with an everlasting love. But you love us too much to let us remain there. Give us faith and humility to accept your process of change so that more and more we become like Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. From Psalm 91. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him.
The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Lent is from Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take, off your, take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression which the e Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, but I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. This is the word of the Lord. Be we read responsively from Psalm 77. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. You display your power among the nations. The descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Lord, 
the very depths were convulsed. Your way through the mighty waters. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Romans chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual, wor spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Invite the children to come forward. Did we have some? Augustina here. Okay. She's coming. Okay. Oop. Oh, yep. <laughs> There she comes. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's all right. Before you sit down, why don't you come, come, up, come up here? Come up here. Come up here. I want to show you something. See, we have... One thing we did, we, we changed these. These are a different color now. We're going to talk about change today. And one thing we changed were the colors on, uh, up here in front of church. And so we changed from white last week to purple. This is purple. It looks really nice, don't you think? Yeah. So why don't we go back? Why don't we go back? Go back and see mom here. And this is Michael's going to talk about some change. We heard about Moses. He changed. Uh, he was tending uh, flocks, watching after sheep, and then God changed what he was going to do in his life. You want to tell us a little bit about that, Mrs. Yeah. Michael? Yeah, Augustina. So what God did with Moses was he changed him from being a person who took care of sheep, being a shepherd, to a person who served God, who served uh, the, the, the people. And God changed Moses, and God changes us, too. God changes you through being with you, living, when, living with, within you, and also through his word. I'm so glad that you came here today, that you came to church to hear more about Jesus and his word and how he changes you and changes Moses. Yeah, let me let me help so, you here. All right. So Augustina, we've got something for you today. You get a piece of paper here that's kind of like the ground where Moses stood. And you want and then we're gonna give you um, the tree that you can color. We'll give you some crayons. And this is kind of a cool tree because it caught on fire. That got, was really cool. Yep, and then and then Moses This is Moses. And Moses even is covering his face because he doesn't feel that he can even look at God. But God had big plans for Moses, just like he's got big plans for you. So you're going to get a packet with the land and the tree and Moses. And, Mom, these will, I've got the adhesive in there. This is like a pop-up book. It'll stand up for you, so it'll be like three-dimensional. Okay, very good. So why don't we, uh, why don't we pray? See, yeah, we'll go ahead. Dear God, thank you for being with us and for uh, helping us learn about how you change us to, to, uh, and forgiving us and to helping us to serve you. Thank you for Jesus who died and rose for us. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks so much for coming up, okay? Yeah, take your... And uh, I'll let you, Mrs. Mike, I'll let you finish coloring this. Just don't do it during the sermon. <laughs> We'll uh, continue uh, uh, in the hymnal by singing hymn number 783, Take My Life and Let It Be.
question for you. What do you want to change in your life? Change? It is said that the only person that likes change is a baby with a wet diaper. Change, pastor, change is a four-letter word. No, I'm sorry, it's a six-letter word. Thank you very much. Uh, so I ask you again, what do you want to change in your life? Maybe it's a habit you want to change, a bad habit. Perhaps there's a bad relationship that you want to be changed or a bad attitude, or a bad situation that you're in, or maybe you made a bad decision that you wish you could go back and change. What is it in your life that you look at and say, this isn't right. This has got to change. Speaking of change, we live in a society that offers instant change. Don't believe me? Well, watch TV, and yet, well, how do you change channels? Just like this, click, click, click. We look at our phones, our smartphones, and we change the screen just like this, tap, tap, tap. We put food in our microwave, and it's ready to eat instantly. We might call that zap, zap, zap. Okay. And because we can change channels and screens and food so fast, we think we should be able to change everything in life with just a click, a tap, or a zap. Or we think we should be able to change our world, our community, or shall we even say perhaps even our church with just a click, a tap, or a zap. Last Sunday, we began a series on the book of Exodus that we will continue throughout the Lenten season on our Sunday morning, in our Sunday morning services. And uh, today, as we uh, get to part two of that, I want to talk to you about how God changes us. God uses the same process with Moses. Now, notice I said the word process. Change is a process. Godly change is a process. It takes time. It happens in God's time. Let's go to the book of Exodus in chapter 2. This is one chapter earlier uh, from where Amarsha read earlier. Chapter 2 tells us that one day when Moses was 40 years old, he saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite. And what does Moses do? Moses kills the Egyptian. Right there. The next day Moses sees the same Israelite and thinks that this Israelite is going to say, well, thank you, Moses. Thank you so much for saving my life and, and, and stepping in to save my life. Uh, but the Israelite doesn't say that. Instead, the Israelite is angry with Moses. And he asks Moses, Hey, are you going to kill me too? Am I next? The word is out. And the Egyptian Pharaoh finds out. And now Moses now knows that he's going to be taken out. So Moses hightails it out of Egypt and ends up working for his father-in-law, Jethro. And he works for Jethro for 40 years. And that's where we pick up with verse 1 of chapter 3 in Exodus. Moses was keeping, we're told, keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. That means he's tending sheep. 
For 40 years. For 40 years, all Moses sees are sheep. For 40 years, all Moses practically hears is sheep. For 40 years, all Moses probably thinks about are sheep. Talk about getting stuck in a rut. We got sheep every, I mean, that's all Moses is doing is sheep. And Moses has to be thinking. <laughs> I would be thinking. Something's got to change here. <laughs> this isn't right. Whether we're tending sheep or doing some other work in life, it happens to us too, doesn't it? We get stuck in ruts. Spiritual ruts. What is it? Are you overly critical of other people? How's your spending? Is it out of control? Have you lost your ambition to be in the Bible or to go to church or to follow hard and with intention after Jesus? Just like Moses, we can look at our lives honestly and say, this isn't right. This really has to change. But the question is, how? Well, I kind of outline, on the, on the back of your bulletin is an outline of how change happens with God. The process of change, and again, remember, change is a process. The process of change, first of all, begins with God's presence. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 3. We're told that the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Now, who is this angel of the Lord? Well, it's no ordinary angel. Basically, biblical scholars agree that it, this angel of the Lord is the Son of God. This, you could say, is Jesus before he was conceived and then born in Bethlehem. So it's no ordinary angel. And the fire itself is no ordinary fire. This is the fire of God. The fire of God appears, for instance, when God calls Gideon and Amos. The fire of God appears when God calls the disciples on the day of Pentecost. And Jesus even says that we are baptized with fire, the, the Fire of God, you might say. And so, well, well, why is God present in fire? Well, think about it this way. Wherever there is fire, you can bet that something happens every single time. And that is change. <laughs> Where there's fire, there is something changing. And what does Moses say? Now, this is really key here. Moses says, here I am. The book of Exodus, along with the rest of the Old Testament, was originally written in Hebrew. And the, and the Hebrew words for here I am, it's actually one word in Hebrew. Here I am in Hebrew is pronounced hinani. Hinani means, here I am. God, I'm at your service. Or as the hymn says that we just sang, take my life and let it be, consecrated Lord to thee. Hinani means, Lord, I'm here and I'm ready to change. Back in Exodus chapter 3, the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them. God says, I know their sufferings. And that means that God loves us right where we're at, right where we're, what we're going through. And God says, I have come down. And that means that God loves us too much to leave us where, we're, where we are. He comes down with fire, the power of his word, even today, to fire us up, as it were, with devotion and passion and love for Jesus. 
And so the pre- process of change begins with God's presence with us. The process of change then continues with God's plan. Exodus chapter 3 tells us, The cry of the people of Israel has come to me, said God, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. This is what God tells Moses. Moses, you're going to do this. Now, let's look at, look at Moses' life. Back in chapter 2, Moses was age 40. Okay. You could probably do this at age 40. But now in chapter 3, 40 years later, now he's 80. And God's calling him to do this amazing thing. I'm going to send you to Pharaoh that you can bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. God, Moses is 80. I don't think so. What does Moses reply? Verse 11 of chapter 3. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? (laughs) Notice how God responds. Actually, notice how God doesn't respond. God doesn't say, hey, Moses, where's your confidence? Come on. Hey, Moses, where's your get up and go? Aren't you a self-starter? Come on, let's go. Moses, don't you know that you could do anything that you set your mind to? Come on, Moses, what is your hang-up? God doesn't say any of that. Why not? Well, because... Moses' question, who am I, is the wrong question. It is always the wrong question. When we want to change the question, who am I, is dead wrong every single time. So what's the right question? The right question is, God, who are you? Who is this God? He is the God who changes us through a process, asking us to live by faith, to take him at his word. He says to Moses in Exodus, this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You shall serve God on this mountain. Yeah, God, that may be in the future, but what about right now? We need something right now. Oh, remember, change is a process. A process. Not our instant time, rather God's time. God says to Moses and to us, you will see my plan unfold when you keep on responding in faith Hin and knee, Lord, here I am. In other words, God calls us to keep taking steps, following him, relying on him when it comes to whether it be getting our finances straightened out or repairing our relationship or getting serious about how we speak to others or being more humble and loving. The Lord is leading us to that mountain. Have you ever picked up a piece of wood off the ground, particularly wet ground? You lift it up, and what do you find underneath? Bugs. And, all, and maybe here in Florida, probably some other, other unidentified wildlife, at least I haven't identified all of the wildlife here, strange life forms. And so you, you pick that up off the ground, and what do you do? Well, I don't know about you. When I see the bugs running, I go running. I throw it down and run. Change often looks like that. It's ugly, it's scary, with all strange life forms. We don't want to deal with it, so we run away and settle for the status quo. 
Like Moses, I'll stick with the dirty, smelly sheep. Thank you very much. Come weal, come woe. My status is quo. Let's just keep things as they are. Well, the process of change begins with God's presence. The process of change continues with God's plan. And thirdly, the process of change is marked by God's provision. There are four excuses that Moses gives God as to why he doesn't want to change. Number one, Moses tells God, I don't even know your name. What does God say? Well, Moses, God gives Moses his name. I am. That's all the name you need, Moses. And, and we know that Jesus is the great I am. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. So, well, God takes care of that excuse. Number two excuse that Moses gives God. Israel's leaders won't believe me. Well, God gives Moses two miracles. A rod that turns into a snake and a leprous hand that heals. So, there are some signs there, Moses. God takes care of excuse number two. Number three excuse that, God, that Moses gives God. God, I'm not a very good speaker. <laughs> I don't do this public speaking thing. No, no, no. Well, God gives Moses, he gives Moses the gift of Aaron. Just as, kind of like God gives us the gift of each other. So when God calls us, we're not alone. And then excuse number four, that Moses gives God. God, somebody else can do this better. God says, no, Moses, <laughs> you the man. You are the man. You are my man. And I've said this before, I've looked on the role, on the uh, membership role of every church that I have served, and I've never had a member of a church named somebody else. I don't, never, somebody else has never joined my church. So what are our excuses? God, I'm too old. God, I'm too young. God, my life is so messed up right now. God, my train left the station long ago. My ship has sailed. God, it's just too late. The voice from the bush is the voice of the Lord's messenger, Jesus. And Jesus says to us, I love you. I shed my blood for you on the cross. I rose from the dead for you. I am not finished with you. There is work to do. In the early 19th century, Napoleon Bonaparte was in the middle of a huge battle. And his officers said, if we don't retreat now, we're going to be annihilated. Well, Napoleon called his bugler and ordered him, sound the retreat. And the 14-year-old bugler was stunned and even began to cry. Napoleon commanded him again, sound the retreat. And the bugler said, but I was never taught how to sound a retreat. I was only taught how to sound an advance. Napoleon said, well then, sound the advance. The bugler sounded an advance, and history records that Napoleon won the battle. It may be tempting in your life, and perhaps, shall we say, even in the life of our church, to call on God to sound a retreat. But my friends, God only knows how to sound and advance. It's called the fire of God. God is determined to change us through his presence, through his plan, and through his loving provision. And when we recognize that, how do we respond? Well, how about this? Hinnany. 
here I am. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now come before the Lord as he has invited us to do uh, in prayer. Today in prayer, we lift up in prayer those who are listed on our blue prayer sheet. We've also been asked to, to pray for the following people. Uh, we pray for uh, Pastor Mark Schreiber, who is uh, uh, attending the Best Practices Ministry Conference in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, Sue and I will be attending that conference as well, but Pastor Mark is giving a presentation on, on Operation Barnabas and ministry to uh, veterans, and so we pray for success for uh, his presentation and for the success of the conference. Uh, we pray for a friend of Rayenshko named Steve, who is recovering from severe injuries from a fall. We pray for our member, Maddie Burnett, who is uh, undergoing a hernia surgery uh, later this week. And we pray a prayer of thanksgiving uh, for Veronica Kerr, who uh, underwent successful hip replacement, and we pray for her recovery as well. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Father, as we enter this Lenten season of repentance and renewal, we pray that you would remember us according to your steadfast love and goodness in Christ and lead us by your Spirit in your ways that we may repent and believe in the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, open our ears, our minds, and our hearts to the sound of your voice, that your word may dwell within us. Transform us by your grace into your holy children and equip us for your service. Lord, we pray your blessing upon your servant, Pastor Mark Schreiber, especially for his presentation uh, later this week, and for all those who attend the Best Practices Conference, that we may, uh, that we may be transformed not only by your word, Lord, but also for uh, increased uh, and joyful service to you and your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, place your blessing upon your church and upon all who serve her, including all pastors, missionaries, chaplains, and church workers. We pray for those who teach the faith in the home, and grant all of these instructors, Lord, gifts sufficient for the task. Prosper the efforts they undertake in your name and make them bold in the proclamation of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, from whom every good and perfect gift comes down to us, keep us from being enticed by our own desires to misuse your gifts in sinful ways. Help us to use them rightly in service to you and to others. Bless our nation and all of our leaders, that we may be governed wisely and justly for the good of this present generation and all those to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we pray for those afflicted in mind or body, for the grieving and the dying, for those sick and those recovering and those facing surgery, and all of those for whom our prayers have been requested, including those whom we have named and those whom we now lift up to you silently in our hearts. We pray, Lord, that they may know the comfort and healing of your presence and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you give us many and rich gifts from our talents and abilities to our time and material goods. Inspire us by your giving love to be generous and faithful in the tithes and offerings that support the work of your kingdom and to be grateful to you at all times and in all places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we come to your son's table at his gracious invitation. Give us true faith to acknowledge the presence of his body and blood and equip us with your spirit so that we may be ready to receive all the gifts that come through your loving hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, 
for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Our worship now continues as we gather our tithes and offerings and grateful thanks to our Lord and to support the ongoing mission and ministry of his church. We now prepare our hearts to receive the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus, and as we do so, and as you are able, I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us stand and sing. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Jesus, you are calling me to change. Empower me to stay with Moses. Here I am. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.